Hey guys, Poor here with another video, this time with my second sponsored coaching video. I partnered with tapin.gg to show you all how beneficial challenger coaching can be. If you get a coach, they'll usually watch one of your games, either live or as a VOD. If you simply stick to that, you won't get the most quality out of your sessions as possible. Coaches are more likely than not willing to engage in discussion or answer questions that you may have before, during, and after the games, and being confident enough to talk about your gameplay is key for these sessions. To showcase this, I bought two coaches at the same time to do a duo session. The website I used to buy these coaches is tapin.gg, and they offer sessions for extremely cheap. Individual coaches will sometimes run you hundreds of dollars per session if you go the normal route, but Tappin only charges $14 per game. This can go even cheaper if you use my promo code 30 poro on the Tappin website to get 30% off of your first three orders, which brings the session total to under $10. Once again, thanks to Tappin for sponsoring the video. With that, let's get into the pre-game session where I spent some time to introduce my pick and my strategy. What role do you play? Uh, I play top lane. What champion? I'm a Kane top one trick. I think that, that Kane's kit is really good for proxying, and I also think that he scales really hard. So I, I feel like a lot of times I can take him into top lane, dodge out on a lot of the difficult matchups, get myself a lot of gold while simultaneously drawing a lot of pressure onto my side of the map which will Wait drag the game out, I'm... and then yes. I'll be able to like scale into late game and carry that way. Sorry, sorry I'm cutting you off. Are you playing Kane Smite top with TP and with Spellbook? I used to go minion DMAT because if I could get a slow push into a crash, or if I decided that like the wave was in a really bad spot and I wanted to like sack the wave and go proxy, uh -huh. then like after that I would go in between the tier 1 and the tier 2 turret to farm that wave, right? But the issue that I was running into is that like one out of every three waves, if it's a cannon wave, then it takes me too long to clear the cannon wave, um, and then the enemy yeah. top laner has time to farm their entire wave under turret come kill me and then get back in time so i would use minion dmat to make sure that like on that window if it was a cannon wave i could just clear the wave normally as if it was a, a normal wave but then they removed dmat so i was like okay what if i what if i just take smite instead i can't really lane straight up i'll lose most matchups if i try to just like trade normally so whenever i notice that a wave is going to start pushing towards them and i don't think that i can force it under tower because the wave's not big enough i'll usually just sack the wave entirely and then go proxy the next one which means that by the time that lane phase ends I've probably sacked two or three waves or something, and I'm down like a level or two. But then if I buy the jungle pet, and then I just start playing normally, like I shove out waves, and then on my roam timers I, I take camps and stuff, I find yeah. that I can get like a massive XP lead. Do you know when the first wave spawns though? First wave comes out at like 105. I cross the wall to get to like the center bush to move to the other side uh -huh. at 112. If I'm on red side, I cross that same wall on the opposite side at 119. And if and at okay. those timers, I can hit the wave at like the exact second I need to to be as late as possible to give the opponent the least time to react. And then from then on, I know that, that the wave spawn once every 30 seconds. So like But if someone is coming to point that you're actually walking to, what would you do then? Then you're forced to lane, no? Or you just drop the wave? Drop the wave entirely. Like it's so I, I tried it for a little bit. If I get stuck in lane, then then what happens is that every single wave I'm losing three or four minions just purely because my champion is worse at laning. So it's like yeah, but you're at least getting the XP of those minions though. The problem is that uh, like there are, there are some matchups that this would be fine, but there's some matchups you don't really need to do this. The reason why I'm saying this is, for example, let's take the Darius matchup. Okay, Darius can just like do the same thing, you know, not let you walk in the lane, and then you can just proxy. That's that's the best outcome for you. At the same time right yeah but if you're playing a matchup where let's say you can walk up why do the proxy then in those matchups oh well i have some rules so for, for example so my usual mentality is if the wave is pushing towards me like if, if it's if, if it's fast or slow pushing towards me i figure out like okay how long is it actually going to take for the wave to crash like how slow is the push i figure out okay when this wave crashes can they kill me on a dive if they can if i think i'm going to die then i'll just i'll just sack the wave and go proxy because i'm like i don't want to fucking die under turret if i think i can catch the wave safely under turret i'll stay and i'll catch the wave yeah. if the enemy is doing that thing where they hard push over and over and over and over again that's completely fine i'll just sit under my turret all game and farm all game the point of proxying is that i'm trying to maximize the amount of cs i get that's the only goal if they want to go proxy themselves and then just just let me catch every single wave for free i'll gladly accept that i will only go to start a proxy if i think i'm going to die under turret or if let's just say i caught a wave under turret and it's going to bounce back now they're going to be able to hold it and freeze it there's no way i can ever walk up to contest the freeze i'm gonna go proxy like it, i think it depends on the matchup because 
the way you're thinking, like I'm making notes and etc. You only want to maximize CS, but I think the next level for you overall is avoid the bad matchup, maximize your CS, and not only that, but if you push really good, you can influence the map because with all that vision, enemy top lane is stuck under tower. If you simply overtake top side control of enemy jungle, like you can ward, etc. Bully enemy jungle, like not give him time to breathe. Because especially in the Malphite matchup, you don't really realistically need to evade him first levels. You can just hard push the wave because then or around second, third wave, you can start proxying the wave. You get your tier of the goddess. I think it's it all depends on the matchup, like, and you should maximize it as well. Like not thinking only about the CS. But how about I can bully enemy jungle, kick him out of the side, zone him, make some frustration into him, and in the meanwhile, you're actually showing enemy, uh, your team where he is. You will play against better players, they, they know how to deal with the proxy. They will punish you pretty easily. Because if you're going to proxy jungles. every single time, yeah, if you're going to proxy every single time, the only answer is going to be you getting smashed down. Averaging it, that's perma. I can plan intuitively for when a jungler is going to be up. I know most times when they're going to look to come and kill me. And then at that point, I can either stall them for time or I can execute. And then what ends up happening in the majority of my games is that my bot lane wins because the enemy's jungler is like freaking out over this cane that's like perma pushing on their side of the map. And therefore, I can use that to yeah. get my other lanes an advantage. Like it takes a lot of pressure off of them. And like that's when how you, I win the games say, as I've been when you say When you say freaking out, then he's about to me. He's a bad player. When I play versus Mr. Baos or some Siege player that thinks that proxying is good, I just do one camp. I do my red buff, I come top lane, I solo queue, thank you for the 400 gold, I continue my clear, my first reset is 1.3k, I have pickaxe longsword, automatically I'm stronger than enemy jungle, then my second parting route, you're again gonna be proxying. I'll kill you, if you suicide I'll just be close to get the XP. That means after the second full clear I'll be level 6, enemy jungle will be level 5. Automatically I win any fight versus him, not only that, but he'll be slower in the clear because of the first blood you gave me. That means automatically if he is not contesting me, I'm influencing the other side of the map. If I'm proxying, the enemy jungler is going to spend more time top side than they will bot side. Like in the in the average game, the enemy jungler will spend more time top side than bot side than they would in a normal game if they see somebody in top lane is proxying because they're going to want to go kill that person. So naturally, pressure will be taken off of the bot side in some way. I'm not saying you're wrong. And we are not saying we are wrong at the same time, but league is about right or wrong. It's not about like, I want to play this style, I want to play aggressive, I want to play passive. It's not about those things. Imagine this, okay? You play 200 games where you can learn significantly amount more, like as compared to like what you're trying to do right now, or you can just keep proxying and try to play in a certain way, which you believe it might be true or it might be wrong. Turns out it's not because we have dealt with these players perma. In Diamond, in Masters, these players never grow up. They never go up because once the players actually get better, they punish them so well. Yeah. Why not You're do the same thing? Yeah. Why not do the same thing from start right now? So make it like way less. I'm. I'm not. Because I need. I person. need. To, I need to see it happen. I have to play the games. Be convinced that the reason why we lost the game was because what I did enabled the enemy jungler. And then once I see it and can confirm it was my fault, then I can look to make changes. I have. Can you share the screen and show us the game versus Bavet where you were 10, 10, 7? Maybe we can see that. He's gonna flush over and then kill me. If I was Bovet and I kill you there, that 700 gold just from the kills, stacks for attacks with which are absurd for Bovet, it makes me clear so much faster than everything. And after the clear, I would have 1k, which would give me seven, uh, 700 gold item from Blair and King and Boots. And automatically now, because of this vision, I know his top side. Full clear here, re clear top side, kill you again, reset, play Grux, yeah. kill you again, kill you again, two plates. You're currently 2k behind. I if I fight it, if I because of these two kills from the dive and everything, if I ever fight 3v3 bot, I win it because I'm just stronger. If I fight mid, I'm stronger, so I'm better. Like you have Perma Prio mid from Vagar. It's hard for them to even gank him. Automatically it means that because of these two kills, mid and bot. Every time it's winning if I'm there. Bevet is griefing, but so is Karnar. Bevet should already be here doing it. Because the thing is, especially into this type of junglers, imagine you have Bevet, it breaks towers. Now you have Yorick, it breaks towers. You could never proxy here because it kills you. Because Bevet just counters your champion so badly until you're level 6 maybe. You fed her early game, now she can get 6 out of the first void groups. It creates her passive. And now imagine you as well have Yorick and Heimerdinger and just destroying the tower.
I mean, this is only like, one game. Like, we can go over your last 20 games yeah. and we can show you the same thing again and again. I have a game where I went, um, that I also played yesterday, where I went 1-9 and nine and I won the game. That was a okay. game where I got set super far behind, like, intentionally, because I was trying to draw pressure. Like, I think that game one is an nine. example of, yeah. of like, yeah, what I'm I'll... saying, where it's like, sometimes my team just gets a massive advantage because I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I will tell you, place. I will tell you, you're going 1-9 and nine, and then jungler is not punishing you well, it will be 100% the jungler's fault, bro. So right now, right now, Echo tries to kill me because I'm proxying between tier 2 and tier 3. I execute, he wastes a lot of time. I went in between tier 2 and tier 3. Echo okay. showed up on the map. Like, Echo shows topside, Elise gags mid, gets a kill on my bot lane. Um, this guy goes just for the ran two down. Two. This guy ran down just now. There's, there's, an, there's gonna be another one where Echo where Echo tries to chase me and then their mid laner and their, and their bot lane dies at the same time because of it. Like, it happens multiple times in this game. Echo shows up topside, Elise goes mid, gets a kill, my bot lane like goes for 2v2 and wins. Like, it, it just... It happens at least two or three times this game. Echo's topside again, he's chasing me. He's not even gonna get the kill, I execute here. But it doesn't really matter, Echo can be anywhere. You're at the same time, though. Yeah, okay, but but if if he's not top, then I then I like get to continue to farm. So it's like he's clearing. on a wave for wave clearing. basis, it's fine. The enemy the enemy Yorick is still dead. He's one it's five. It's not because of you though. What's happening? Then check what? it out, now my bot lane dives. Do you think they're gonna go for that dive if they don't know where Echo is? Yes. I don't think so. I think I think they only go for the dive because Echo just spent 30 seconds chasing me top lane. Let's say this is because they did this because Echo was top, okay? Yep. Let's say I agree with you, 100% right? I agree with you, okay? You're probably right. Now, out of the 20 wrong plays, this is the only one which actually kind of favored you. I also see like 30 losing ways or 30 plays which you lost your team. I don't think you're doing the wrong things. Uh, I mean, the way you think is completely fine. I don't mind that. But the only problem is that you should be way more flexible because proxying sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. And you should think like that. But if you approach every single game that I want to run in a lane, I want to take the wave, it's just simply wrong. Because you will be punished and the junglers will capitalize on it and they will actually get a lead. Your jungle will suffer, your team will suffer because he has like one item above your jungle or something like that. The way you should do this is, for example, if you're playing against Cybern, okay, let's say you can do that. If you're playing against Malphite, you don't need to do that. You can just like play normally. And then you can proxy later, for example. If you get like a better item, you can just proxy start proxying later. After spending over an hour going to the past games and discussing the pros and cons of my setup and strategy with Kane Top, we finally got in game. The game itself was pretty short and uneventful, but even in a situation like this, I still got plenty of interesting tips that I hadn't considered before. Are you gonna pre proxy or not, by the yeah. way? Yeah. So like I said, the, the timer is 112 with you over this wall. I'll check this bush. I, I always check all the bushes because it's like, if somebody's standing there and I walk past, it's obviously really bad. So like this is this is my normal game plan. If I was you, I would execute right now. Not worth. So like for me, I know that I think that most junglers cross around 235. So like for me, this is like a window that I have. So see how he's back. So I can see what he does. If he does the Raptors, I have window to proxy one more. If he if he skips, if that word, if I see that he skips, and I just execute. Then he executes. Yeah. So that's like the like that's like an ideal scenario of what happens. Yeah. It's it. But by the way, I would heavily suggest you that. You just reset the earlier wave and walk to lane without dying. That way, by the way, like, you basically, this little 250 gold item is worthless. You would not have it, but you would currently be on wave. Some of the jungles can actually die with you, know? Like, you're dead, you know? Like, Sin Zhao can actually die with you. Lee Sin, Sin Zhao, Bel Vai, Zach, Zach can die with Yeah, Zach can also die with you. So this is where you should be punished. This is what I mean, like, so that's why, like, the reset earlier, what he was talking about, is okay. better. Okay. Also, you should slow push this and crash the next one. Yep, that's Just the plan. That's the you. plan, yeah. If I was you, by the way, I would legit go for enemy raptors. Zack is bot, take his raptors. Irrelevant wave, he can never kill you. Just push so fast. Like, legit now, you could probably push this wave, go his raptors. So for me, I see this wave as uncontestable. I don't know if you guys would agree, but I just I mean, don't think yeah, I can yeah, contest it. Just really important, I would heavily suggest you buy a pink ward and use one of your, the pink ward on the bush behind yeah, red. I, and I would actually normal. use the yeah, pink ward here, is where I would usually yeah, put it if I bought one. And your normal like ward on raptor's bush, and your normal ward on raptor's bush, and enemy jungle is permanently in vision. He'll try to TP. Maybe. Okay, actually, he listened to TP. Nah, if you say now this is an example of why can top works, bro. Um. No. <laughs> mm. 
This story doesn't work. True. If the one game that I play, I go 20 and 10 and then win, then you guys are wrong. And if the one game that I play, I go 1 and 10, then you guys are right. Yeah, now there are 9 right. games where you're 0 9 we are right. This looks pretty doomed to me. I don't think we're gonna get anything off of it. You have smite, you can try. It's small yeah, chance. Yeah, I'm gonna try, yeah. Yeah, it's worth trying. I mean, even if he doesn't have damage, I think he's Hmm. Well, he has the same game plan. He attracts three people to kill him. Maybe. So he still gets something around the map. That looked yeah, like I mean, it was probably oh. gonna be the best angle I, I was gonna get. I mean, I would agree with your understanding that you'll be ahead and winning, but that's looking at the game 1v1 if there's only top lane. But the game is completely 5v5. Like, the best players on top lane know how to influence mid jungle. Let's yeah. talk about what I said he resets on third wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying reset right now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is kind so, of if you to stop push into you, you escape enemy jungle, it's stop push into you, you're ungankable. So you, you so I reset here on, yeah. on wave three instead of wave four, because usually I reset on wave four. So I have a question, I, I have a question. Yeah. What would wave four reset would achieve? That's the, you know, that's the, like something that I would like to know, like... Yeah, so, so the, the reason why I reset on wave four is because that happens to be the timer that most junglers are doing raptors, and because I usually yeah. have the work here, I can check if they move to me or if they go to red. If they go to red, I actually take the fifth wave too. Like, and then I'll just keep on taking waves until they finally decide to come up and then I'll execute. If they keep on clearing camps, I'll just keep proxying. Yeah, but if you reset, you have tier that goes faster, it's a slow push yeah. back into, it helps you scale faster. Not only that, you evade the gank when he's finishing full clearing, then you create a slow push under his tower because it's That's a pushback true, true. and then you're on a, he can never move from lane to actually fight you because he's catching the mass wave if he moves you waste so much of his time it's not worth for him okay so yeah. I, if i reset on wave three york clears uh -huh. this wave four is crashed but it bounces towards uh -huh. me he slow pushes wave five and then crashes on wave six uh -huh. i can farm wave seven Wave 8 is going to be like here slow pushing. At this point yeah. in the game, base game is just like not a champion. So then I would sack wave 8 and then catch cannon wave wave 9. Yeah, but think about it. If he, by the way, crashes uh, and the 5 wave push uh, pushback creates, yeah. he's creating at such a pushback wave that enemy, enemy laner first cannot contest him. Like uh, wave 6, when he's pushing back, enemy laner cannot contest him in this massive wave because he just naturally wins because of the amount of minions. Plus enemy top laner never got a reset off your full HP. That means you're never stacking waves because you just crash the six, get the seven between tower. So you're evading your main problem, which is that you have to stack seventh or eighth wave, well, which I you think, don't. I think even with having a full minion wave of, of advantage, if I'm slow pushing, I think that Yorick with Ignite can still kill me if I try to slow push. You'll be level five then. Your WQ will just, you're just waiting a bit. You're spacing him a bit. The minions get low, you press Q, you kill them. The goal would be find a window to WQ the wave and then E out. The problem yeah, against but... Yorick specifically is that once I once I commit Q, I don't have the dash to get out of his W, so he can put the W around me. And then the only way I can get out is if I E dash. out, and if I E out of his W, I can't E through I the wall. Off. No, 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 your E is the dash. You just run away from the wall, and the thing is he cannot freeze that wave. So you still catch so some of the wave. How do I run that... away from the wall? My, my W puts me in place. My Q locks me into a fixed animation. He's yeah, going to land yeah, but W. You're, you're looking at a single pattern type way of pushing the wave. You can always just wait the means to get lower HP and just farm them in just the last moments. Because realistically speaking, the best thing that happens is you have the massive wave, so it pushes faster. Not only that, but what happens is your minions are constantly making enemy minions lower. So yeah. you don't really need to last hit them with Q. You can just last hit them with W as well. And most of them, like you can use your 
W for the first three minions and then just W the others when they're lower HP. So you're not putting yourself in the range of danger, which is for Yorick. Like you're not positioning yourself in a way that he can actually kill you. So then you can save your E. Like with your Q, you kill the first three minions. With your W, you kill the last three minions. But you don't do it instantly together. And then you can just E out because you're spacing so far back. Because he needs to as well be farming in the meanwhile. And yeah. if he tries to use all of his spells on you, you just clear the wave. He's in the middle of big minion, if a big minion wave. Okay, I'll just say fight me as well, bro. If you want to fight me, fight me in this massive wave. Because just one shot your wave. And he's on the losing trade because he has no items. You have a reset. And then you just E over the wall. I think this is the type of situation where York can actually just like walk at me despite the fact that i have minion advantage and i think he, he can can't. freeze here i think he can freeze he can't freeze the, the, i've been in this situation a few times and i and i and i found that like most of the stronger top laners will just like yes, pop a freeze and then if i try to fight them they'll kill me let's talk about this scenario let's talk about this scenario you're talking about a one one uh one d version of how things work the realistic thing is you you can just play to last hit you don't need to kill with the wave you can just last hit the first three minions in a way that you have your q to escape his wall you don't need your q to last hit the minions and then you have your double for backline minions and then you have your second Q uh, that was not used the first time in the situation to escape his ult then you can E over the wall and go for the wave in between towers and he cannot freeze this wave because he's currently tanking 10 minions and if he freezes currently it's no okay so, so you think you think only farm with auto attacks and W's never use Q no this is okay. a, a okay. low, low, low way of understanding it it depends on the situation if he's contesting you, and if you have to use your WQ in, your, in a situation where you die, you don't do that. You just put okay. yourself in a situation where you yeah. just still get the, either the XP, because imagine if it's Darius and he, I don't know, he can kill you if you walk up. So you just say, okay, I'll make this wave push, but I'll be here for the XP, buddy. I'll be here for the XP. He cannot tank the wave, he cannot freeze it, and then you just leave him. You don't need to use your spells automatically in the wave. Just wait to see the opponent, how he's reacting, and he gives you the opportunity to actually play out the wave in such a way that he, in the end he just fucked up, you know? If you ever get killed in this situation with this massive wave, with your kit you currently have versus Yorick, obviously you're making the biggest mistake of your life because you simply do not understand how the game works. The thing is, if he hits E, yeah, if he hits E, maybe that's why you can kill to jerk it you can distance yourself if he's threatening it's about his position and the pattern of the way he's playing you can notice just by the way he's clicking he's looking to kill you and fight you and you just simply understand okay this guy is aggressive he wants to kill me here no no champion can contest you like uh, i can show you multiple examples it's, it's usually like this you never trade hp when the wave is coming in do you so in, in my head like before anything else i still feel like that's a risk like i make one mistake i die the other th like I mean, on the flip side like... if i if i just like sack a wave and i proxy the next one there's like no second risk of me is making like, a mistake. I disagree with, by the way. I disagree with second. Yes. I think giving your ex sacking, you're giving him two clips. This is a huge fuck up. Sacking a wave is like, in my eyes, like a huge fuck up. In a case, we're sure if it's not your ex, like in some cases in this game, we actually did sack. Sure, so I, I'm fine because if the wave is fine. But sacking, if you have an option to fight and use R and crash the wave and get out, always take that. Sacking the wave, yes. I don't really disagree with. I think sacking can... the wave is just too insane. What you're saying is like fine. In the situation that you're describing, Right? Uh -huh. Like, I, I, it's slow push the wave, crash it, use the window, like, if I could proxy short or whatever, use the window to try to, like, look for some kind of an advantage, like, make a play mid. In that situation, it's essentially, like, I crash the wave, and then I have, like, this window of time, and I figure out what I have to do during that window of time, right? If yeah. what I'm doing with that window of time is not proxying, then the end result is that I have to go back to my lane. Like, either I have to TP back to my turret, or I have to walk back to my turret, and then I rinse and repeat the same situation again. I find that over the course of the game, I lose 20, 30 minutes, just because of how weak Kane is. If I was playing a champion like 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 Darius, mm -hmm. this wouldn't be a problem. But mm -hmm. because of how weak Kane is, over the course of that thing unfolding multiple times over the course of a game, mm -hmm. I end up losing probably like five, six minions every single time, just because of, of like how much pressure he has like just by being there. On the flip side, if I sack one wave, which is like, so I lose six minions, I lose six minions of XP. Yorick gains like fuck all whatever. Let's say he like gains like a shit ton, right? If I'm looking just at me and I'm looking at like, I need to carry the game. I lose six minions in that scenario. Then I get to start proxying, which means that all of the pressure from lane is alleviated and I'm guaranteed to get every single minion as long as I'm proxying. So for me, I would rather go down six minions and give him an advantage and then get to farm. And then I'll use like my surplus of gold to try and win versus if I have to lane against him and I might not die and he might not get the plates, but over the course of the lane, instead of losing six, I've now lost like 20, 30. 
So like, I want to know what your thoughts are on that, because like that's like, a me, big okay, part okay, of what. Okay, I understand yeah. it. Okay, okay, I understand it. Okay, let me present you the argument. Okay, it's really going to be really simple for you to understand this. Okay. You moving mid, you're making alternative play. You're also getting something out of it. You're getting jungle camp. You're getting a mid kill, or you might be getting a flash out of the mid lane. Okay. Now remember when the freeze breaks, it slow pushes into you. Now it depends. Like fuck, we don't know. We don't care which wave is in. It might be cannon. It might be it's coming into you. Yeah. Once you crash the wave into you, you take the wave. Okay. And now you're saying it's going to be back at the same same thing again. It will be slow pushing back into him. But now you are a level ahead. Okay. Not only that, you actually are also you did also you know get the mid flash or probably get the mid kill. You also took some jungle camps, for example. After the game, we spent a long time talking out exact scenarios for different wave states and potential places enemies could be. I can't show it all to you in a video like this, but I promise you can get the most out of your own coaching sessions if you go in with the right mindset. Some of the tips I learned proved to be useful right away, such as control wording the lane bush for information all game, and basing on wave 3 to start stacking tier as early as possible. Another reminder that you can use my promo code 30 Pora to get 30% off of your order on tapin.gg. I stream my solo queue games on Twitch, and I also have a Discord server, links to both will be in the description. If you want to support me, consider checking out my merch website or my Ko-fi page to send tips, both links will also be in the description. My next video will likely be my 5 off-beta supports video, so look forward to that! I'll see you all next time, bye!